Hey, hey, Scorpio. Happy to see you. Thanks for being here. I'm Madeline, if we haven't met before. And if we have, so excited to see you. Thank you for coming back. So, you are back for a big month, Scorpio. It is officially eclipse season. We've got a new moon slash solar eclipse in Libra on October 14th that will occur in your house of endings it's the house right before you know it's about to be scorpio season the end of october will be scorpio season just then enters your first house enters scorpio um before then it has to pass through midnight <laughs> which is the 12th house right it has to pass through the finality before we get to the dawn so unsurprising for scorpio people it looks like you'll be diving quite deep this month so on the 14th like i said that eclipse happening in your house of the past, endings, erosion, um, unfinished business, skeletons in the closet. Whenever there is a solar eclipse, there will be a corresponding full moon because a solar eclipse is like a new moon on steroids, right? So there will be a corresponding full moon in Libra in March of next year that will represent a culmination, perhaps a completion when it comes to gaining that clean slate from the past cleansing what is you know hanging around what is um sharp memories shoved under soft rugs that you could potentially step on and hurt yourself it's the time to be pulling up the rugs and sweeping everything out from under that's what that solar eclipse is ushering in for you a period of huh, cleaning out your metaphorical closets okay give you a six month time limit how do you feel about that <laughs> And then we will have the lunar eclipse in Taurus on, on uh, October 28th. And that's happening in your house of partnerships, one-on-one -on -one contacts. So that can be romantic, romantic partners, of course. That can also be business partners, creative partners, um, mentor and mentee relationships, counselor and patient, tarot reader and querent, anything where it's one-on-one, -on -one, you and I, we. And full moons represent those culminations and also those spotlights. So you may notice how you are, you know, relating to your partners showing up in stark relief around the 28th. You know, you might feel the urge to ritualize or to do some kind of work around the eclipses. I would advise you to just create space to notice what's coming up around you and inside of you. But more on that next week. I will be putting up a... Um, some video horoscopes. So I'll get into the astrology of the solar eclipse along with what it's doing for each sign. And then I will do the same with the lunar eclipse toward the end of the month. So check in there for more information. Stay tuned. In the meantime, let's pull some cards and get into the story of your month. And after we see what spirit has in store, we will close the reading by pulling a couple of cards from the star codes oracle deck. Get a little insight from your stars about this earthly tale. So, Spirit, we want to know, what's going on with Scorpio? Scorpio sun, moon, rising in October. Happy birthday, happy solar return to my October Scorpios. What do they need to know, Spirit, as their season approaches? What do you want to share with Scorpio in this moment for their highest good, their greatest potential, potential for fulfillment? joy, love, abundance, and peace. What does Scorpio need to know? What is the truth? What's coming up for Scorpio in the month of October, Spirit? What do you want to share with them for their highest good? Their highest good. Scorpio. Wow. Okay. This feels like a fat stack. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have some catching up to do, don't we, Scorpio? Thank you, Spirit. I want to know where Scorpio finds themselves, the beginning of their story, where they're headed, and what do you want to share with them? All in the name of their highest good. Wow. Woo! Are you waiting? Are you hesitating to put yourself out there? Are you at all um, perhaps questioning? 
your abilities, your talents, your maturity level, even when it comes to your skills. We'll talk about it, but oh, in fact, I'm going to throw your reading up right here. So you're going to be able to see what I'm looking at. Wow. I see a level up. Oh, you got to drop some, some shit to level up sometimes, don't you? That happens. We don't talk about that part too often. Wow. Wow. Okay. <sighs> Scorpio. I feel that there is... There's something that you're letting go of this month. It feels like you tried your best. You did everything that you could, and this thing just kind of fell flat, didn't work out. Ten of Swords is sitting in the, like, a, what's happening around you? What's showing up? What's available? An ending. A closed door. And, you know, not to, not to be the eternal optimist that I, turns out that I am, um, but a closed door, a dark night, a twelfth house has to come before the dawn. And we see dawn is indeed breaking in the background of this card. So I don't mean to bypass whatever pain or grief or upset that comes with this Ten of Swords. Feel your feelings. Queen of Cups is showing up in the basement of your reading. There's you, the Queen of Water. Get with your emotions. This is really interesting too. I'm reading all of the fixed signs today and all of you have had the Queen of Cups and the Six of Cups show up in your readings. So that's very interesting. There's getting in touch with your feelings, and there is also getting in touch with people who help you get in touch with your feelings, like old childhood friend, like sibling that was my best friend growing up. That's the kind of vibe. This person can help you re-energize yourself and kind of get a better idea of what it is that you Getting a, you know, it's like, it's so weird. I want to use the phrase getting a hold of yourself, but not like, oh, you're out of control, Scorpio. Not like that. But like, you've got great ideas. Now it's about focus. If we can focus that energy, things are going to turn out great. So five of wands at the center of your reading, crossed by the magician. This is why I was asking, like, is there something you're hesitating to do? Or maybe you're like, ah, like I'm playing around. I'm out here. Like I'm doing it, but not. It's like playing with ideas and kind of batting them around. That's the five of wands. In the key position, we have the seven of wands. That's a very different energy. This is fuck around. This is fuck around and find out. This is, I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to grab my one wand and my one wand can stand up against all of this opposition, all of these differing opinions, perhaps all of these like, no, we don't really like the way you're doing it. Well tough. So right now you might be playing with ideas, batting things around, kind of like focusing more on competition than what you have. That's just what I'm hearing. Put more focus on what you have than on what it is with respect to what everybody else is doing. Like if you're, you know, comparing the size of your wand to other people, that is not doing anything to help you move forward. The magician crossing your reading. You know how many wands the magician has? One. I'm going to do this one thing with my wand. I'm going to focus. I don't mean that you literally need to grind everything down to just one thing, but I do feel like don't spread yourself thin. Seven of Cups is sitting in the past. Seven of Cups is like, oh, I've got a lot of ideas. There's so many possibilities, and I get kind of lost, which is also echoed in that Five of Wands getting a little bit lost in the sauce, getting a little bit like caught up on the wrong things, like people who are maybe looking at their analytics instead of creating content. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like doing the yardstick thing is not fucking helping. So do what a Scorpio does best. Tune into yourself, tune into your soul, and let what you are and what you be and what you do reflect that, okay? Six of Cups, again, that old friend or sibling will be coming through to remind you, like, hey, have you forgotten how amazing you are? Hey, do you remember when we used to do this thing and it was so much fun and it, like, kicks off an idea? That's what I'm hearing. I know how specific that is, where it's like, hey, wait, that's a great idea for a show or a podcast or an invention or whatever. I don't know what this is, Scorpio. These are um, a great time to remind you. These are general readings for every Scorpio. 
Scorpio sun, moon, rising, or stellium people that tune in. So it's going to mean different things for different people. You know what it means for you. You know where you might have been diffusing your energy or perhaps focusing on not the most productive or efficient things. Bring the focus back to self. The magician, you got the queen of wands sitting in your fucking future with the five of wands at the center, seven of wands in the key position. I see you doing this. I see you grabbing this talent or this skill or this idea and fucking flourishing because you're like, let me do my thing. Let me not get mixed up in what everybody else is doing or thinking or whatever, because that's just making me feel caught up or defeated or distracted. Let me grab my thing. I'm going to do my thing. You show up as Queen of Wands, a person who has mastered like their creativity, a natural leader, charismatic. People notice you. People follow you. People want to come closer to you. I see you sparkling. So I said, bring the focus back to self because the magician, the queen of wands, each of these people, again, you know what they have in common. They're holding their one wand, the queen, the magician, the seven, one wand, this. I don't have to manage all that other shit. I don't have to be looking at what everybody else is doing. My eyes are on my own fucking paper. I'm making my own magic. Nine of pentacles in the position where you find yourself. Pat yourself on the fucking back. Good job. You stand in a strong place independent, fulfilled, flourishing. It's like everybody can see the skills and the returns and the money, pardon me, that you have built up for yourself. If you're missing any of your confidence, I feel like it returns this month. So if you start the month or when you get into this reading, you're feeling a little bit like, I don't know if I know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm on the right path. I feel like many things, perhaps this reading included, it would be my honor will kick you back into, holy fuck, I know exactly what I'm doing. And, you know, exactly is not the right word. We're not talking queen of swords. We're talking queen of wands. I know how to follow my passion, my inspiration, my creativity. I know that where my energy goes, you know, good things will come back to me. When I invest in what lights me up, I will see returns. Nine of pentacles. Uh, this is also, you know, the Nine of Pentacles, if you were to Google it, some of the words that would come up associated with it are like single and happy, independent financially and romantically or whatever. This doesn't apply to all Scorpios. Not all of you will be single. I see this as more as even if you have a partner, the lovers is showing up right in that potential position. So even if you have a lover, a partner or multiple partners or whatever this is, the important thing is that you stay centered in who you are, in what you feel, in what matters to you, and not get distracted by petty things, competitive things, people who are trying to win a verbal battle when you're out here trying to win your own personal war, okay? So don't worry about this verbal battle. Don't worry about this perhaps like friend or situation that falls off, Ten of Swords. They're just like, well, I really tried. I really did everything I could. You know what? It's dying a peaceful death. I'm going to go ahead and resign myself, give that fucking thing a Viking funeral, light it up, send it out, wave goodbye. I'm good. I've got new and better things coming to me. <sighs> it was actually a little too much wind to get my fire going, right? Too many swords. Too many swords get in the way of expression. Ooh, am I doing it right? Ooh, is this okay? Ooh, what about that person? Ooh, what do they think? Too many distractions. I'm gonna grab my wand. I'm gonna do my thing. In the potential position, the lovers. Ignition. Union. Yes, the lovers can mean romance. It can mean meeting someone or uh, deepening the bond with somebody more likely than like meeting somebody. But it implies a crossroads, a choice. It's making me think of the fact that this this eclipse, this new moon, the solar eclipse is going to be square um, Pluto and opposite Chiron. Again, we'll get into that in the astrology video, but just as like a little preview, it's about what stands in my way when it comes to being true to myself and how can I maneuver in a way that allows me to be more of who I am, not less in the face of people or things that don't understand me or wish that I could be different. 
How can I use those to my advantage? If anybody knows how to use things to their advantage that don't seem to be an advantage, it's a fucking Scorpio. It's a Plutonian motherfucker like you, Scorpio. So I trust you. And thankfully, you're going to get a little wisdom from your stars to help you do that. Grab your wand. Focus on yourself. Remember all of the gifts and talents and wisdom that you have. Remember how fucking magical and psychic you are also between the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands? Like, trust that intuition. Grab that intuition. Be proud. That's what I'm also hearing is like, be proud. Nine of Pentacles, the Magician, Queen of Wands, you should be proud of yourself. And if you're not feeling that way, then call up your, your best hype friend, your best hype man, woman, they, them, and let them help remind you who the fuck you are and what the fuck becomes possible for you and presents itself to you when you recognize yourself as like, yeah, I am 100% that witch. <laughs> okay. Let's get some guidance from your stars, Scorpio. I want to pull a couple cards, spirit, to give Scorpio something to work with, a key. What do we need to know to unlock this? What information or motivation or insight? is best going to serve Scorpio in moving through the month of October and ending up feeling like I'm a motherfucking magician and queen of fucking wands. Oh, bitch. What did I say? There's moon square Pluto and moon is going to oppose opposition, Chiron, confrontation. And we've got the, <laughs> the deer having their confrontation over here and their, their cousin the ram, Aries, over here. So a confrontation with those who wouldn't understand you. I mean, this looks like a confrontation, right? And Aries says, act. Aries says, yeah, there sure is a confrontation. And we know exactly who we are what we believe, what we know, and what, uh, what we know to be true. And we're going to act on it, even if there is confrontation. We're better than these people. <laughs> That's just what I'm hearing. Okay. All right. <laughs> Scorpio, I hope this is helpful. Thank you so much for being here. If you ever want to read your horoscope or get a personal reading or do any other fun things, you can check out my website, madelinethevillagewitch.com. And I would love to hear if you know what this is. If you, you, do you know where you are in your story? Do you know what your wand is? Do you know what your magic is? Let me know in the comments. Always super curious. I've got a lot of Scorpio placements myself, so I'm like, so let me know. Thank you again for being here, Scorpio. Blessings to you and yours. And if I don't see you in your video horoscope, then I hope I will see you in your mid-month reading. Bye, Scorpio.